There are very few video game franchises with the pedigree and staying power of Pokemon, and even fewer that have stayed as rigidly to the same gameplay formula across their history. While the gameplay model of the Pokemon franchise is an enduring classic, Pokemon Legends Arceus showed that Game Freak can innovate with Pokemon and make it even better. Whether this will turn out to be a one-off experiment, a sign of things to come, or a revolution for the franchise is still up in the air, but Pokemon Legends Arceus certainly delivered a great experience and has given me hope for the direction of Pokemon moving forward. This game is for Pokemon fans of all types. Pokemon Legends Arceus is a monster collecting game with a blend of action combat and exploration in addition to the standard turn-based battling of the Pokemon franchise. The game was developed by Game Freak and published by Nintendo and is counted as a mainline game in the series, not a spin-off. The game was announced along with remakes of the fourth generation Pokemon games during the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, and the game released for the Switch on January 28, 2022. The game serves as a prequel to the fourth generation and is the first Pokemon game set in this time period. Upon release, the critical reception was positive and the sales were excellent, 6.5 million copies in the first week, topping Sword and Shield and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl's opening week figures. It seems that the major changes to the gameplay and setting of the game paid off with the audience, so let's talk about the setting of the game and how it differs from a standard Pokemon game. Pokemon Legends Arceus is set in the distant past from the Pokemon world we are all familiar with from the games and anime. It's so far back, in fact, that many people still fear Pokemon, and the invention of the Pokeball allowing them to be captured and trained is still a novel thing. The player character comes from the present. It is unsure if this means the present in the real world or present in the Pokemon world, but that's not important. The player character is transported back to this time period. Before going there and then, though, you meet Arceus, who turns your smartphone into a special Arc phone that will help in your journey to catch them all. You're then dropped into a beach outside of Jubilife Village in the Hisui region, which is what they called the Sinnoh region back in the day. There you meet Professor Laventon and his adorable but flighty Pokemon. After you show a knack for capturing these Pokemon, Professor Laventon brings you back to the village where you join the Survey Corps of the Galaxy team and get to pick one of Cyndaquil, Oshawott, and Rowlet to start with. Over the course of the story, you will need to work with the rival clans, the Diamond and Pearl clans, quell the frenzy of their noble Pokemon, and investigate the anomaly in the sky that you fell out of, and seems to be the source of even more strange occurrences in the land of Hisui. All of this in addition to completing the first ever Hisuian Pokedex. Looks like you've got your work cut out for you. Pokemon in general is not known for its story, but this story really worked for me because it fits so well with the new structure of the game. No gym battles or Pokemon League kept the character count lower than it usually is and allowed greater focus and arcs for those characters that remained. These are not the deepest characters, but they are lovable and a few go through some nice personal journeys. They also feel distinct from the standard Pokemon archetypes apart from the Professor and Rival, which we've certainly seen before. Aiding this story investment are some little improvements towards making the characters more expressive, including the player character. You no longer stare blankly all the time while people are talking. It's a monumental revolution! Kidding aside, the cast of the game is lively and gives a nice breath of life and energy into the game that other Pokemon casts have lacked. As for gameplay, the system has been turned on its head with Pokemon Legends Arceus actually emphasizing the catch-them-all mentality that most Pokemon games have only given a passing mention to. The standard Pokemon battles are still here, but I'll get to those later. The main portion of the game, then, is spent trying to catch Pokemon to fill out your Pokedex. There are three different types of Pokemon and their reactions to you in the field. The first are the really friendly ones who will just walk up to you. The second are the flighty ones who will run away at the slightest provocation. And the third are the aggressive ones that will try to attack you if they spot you. These different types means you'll need to try different approaches to capture each Pokemon, although the main strategy is to sneak through tall grass and try and hit them from behind with a ball. You can also use items that can lure them in, stun them, get them stuck, or even to run away if you're the one in trouble. You are encouraged through monetary rewards from your excursions to catch many Pokemon, and also because in order to fill out a Pokemon's full Pokedex entry, you need to reach a certain research level. This can be done by catching multiples of the same Pokemon in various ways, along with defeating them in battle, using them in battle, or completing side quests associated with them. It's a far more in-depth system than the series has ever had before, and it also vastly increased the fun for me while playing. 
There are still issues with this first time system, just trying catching a small Pokemon in the water is not fun. But overall, I would be sorely disappointed if the innovations this capture system has brought are not carried forward to future games. The Pokemon themselves aid in the enjoyment of this part of the gameplay because of the variety in how they react to you. While they do fall into the three types I talked about before, their behavior in the field has some distinctions, especially among the friendly Pokemon. It is a lot of fun having a Bidoof just run up to you to say hi, or a Blissey come and try to heal you when you've taken damage. And yes, you're gonna be taking some damage, either from falling or from Pokemon trying to attack you. Not every Pokemon has distinct interactions with you or the environment around them, but there's enough of it to give a great sense of life to the world you are exploring. These details help make for a richer gameplay experience and show the developers knew that people would love these little interactions in the field, which I certainly did. Exploration is highly encouraged with the new crafting system. You'll mainly be making your own Pokeballs, potions, and the like. The ingredients are all around you and can either be picked up as you are running around or collected by Pokemon from trees or ore deposits. I like the system, although I wish your inventory space wasn't so limited and that the cost of increasing it wasn't so exorbitant. Alas, you'll need to continuously manage your inventory to make sure you've got room for stuff. Traversal of each of the distinct regions of the map is a good time as well because of the ride Pokemon. You likely saw these in the trailers, flying around with Braviary, surfing with Basculegion, and riding on Weirdeer. It's just as fun as you would expect, and very handy when trying to get to a particular location or trying to escape your current predicament. Pokemon Legends Arceus respects your time and thus gives you many tools to make your journey quicker and easier. Battling, of course, returns in a very similar way to how it usually has been in the series. Your Pokemon team can have up to six members, all of whom can have up to four different moves of various types. You use your moves and team to battle your opponent, either a wild Pokemon that you might want to catch, or another person with a Pokemon team. Each Pokemon has strengths and weaknesses to certain types, and the math behind it has been adjusted so that the type advantage is even more crucial than usual as opposed to level. This adjustment seems to be mainly to keep some challenge to the game if you decide to overlevel, but also to give you a chance against some of the really strong alpha Pokemon you can encounter. Don't worry about missing them. The alphas are very obvious due to their size and red eyes. For instance, in the first area, there is a Rapidash at level 40, or higher, I don't quite remember, when most of your party is unlikely to have even reached level 20 yet. These encounters are a very fun optional challenge to your journey, and the rewards for either capturing or defeating them are worth it. The Alpha Pokemon adds another element to the game that encourages the player to explore and challenge their team. The other big change for this gameplay system are the agile and strong style moves. Once your Pokemon has mastered a move, you can choose between what style you want the move to be. Agile moves don't hit as hard, but are fast, so you can sometimes get two hits in before the opponent can react. Strong style is the reverse, hard hitting but slow, so they tend to be best used to finish off opponents. Your opponents will also use these moves, so best be wary or you're gonna have the tables turned on you. The noble Pokemon are a different matter. These boss battles are mainly action battles with you dodging attacks and throwing bombs at the nobles to calm them. There are occasionally brief instances of standard battles within this, but so long as you have a strong Pokemon with a super effective move in your party, these sections will be over quickly. There's not too much else to say. The battles are sufficiently epic and have some variety. None of them blew me away mechanically, but given this is the first time Game Freak has done something like this, I'm impressed at the mode. The balance of challenge and fun was appropriate, and I think a proper full action RPG from Game Freak could be quite good if they wanted to try it, based on what I saw in these battles. Lastly, when it comes to gameplay, there have been certain minor changes that increased the quality of life for the player. The first and my favorite is the change to how learning new moves and changing movesets happen. Instead of needing to go to a certain NPC to get movesets changed back to previously learned moves, you can change a Pokemon's moves at any time from the team menu. The move pool expands as your Pokemon levels up, so keep checking to pick up the new moves and adjust to the challenge coming up. This is also where you can rename them whenever you wish. For those of you, like myself, who have never had friends to trade with to evolve Pokemon, Arceus has something for us as well. There are now special items that allow Pokemon like Kadabra and Haunter to evolve without being traded. This store also contains regular evolution stones that can be gotten via merit points received when finding lost satchels in the various areas of the game. It is finally time for us to collect all the evolutions. 
Much like the Pokemon catching, I hope these features are not an Arceus exclusive moving forward because it would be a disappointment to revert back to the more restrictive, time-consuming system from before. But for now, I'm just going to appreciate these for what they are. That brings me to discussing the presentation of the game, and yes, I've heard the discussion on the graphics. I'll repeat what I said in my first video on the game. I care far more about interesting and well-constructed visual design than top-tier graphics, and that is what Pokemon Legends Arceus has. The visual style really fits the world and gives it a sense of vibrancy that I was very happy with, so I don't even notice textures popping in or robotic animation of Pokemon far off at the edge of the draw distance. I'm too busy experiencing the world and that's what's important. On that note, the music draws me in further to the world and may be my favorite Pokemon soundtrack ever. I think the new setting offered the composers a new challenge and that allowed them to stretch creatively to make a gorgeous set of music. There is no voice acting, as always, and I feel that's the frontier I would wish most for Game Freak to explore in upcoming games. The accessibility of the game isn't great though because of the action-based interactions. There are some things that help like being able to start with continued progress when fighting against the noble Pokemon, but for the most part they didn't step up on this one. The user experience of the game though is vastly better than previous Pokemon games. Switching Pokemon, ride Pokemon, items, and accessing information in the field is simplified and everything is a button or two away, and the less time spent fiddling with menus, the more time you have to play this wonderful game. Pokemon Legends Arceus has reinvigorated my enjoyment of the series, and maybe it will be just a one-time thing, but I'm definitely hoping that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet resemble this game. If they do, then this truly will be the year of Pokemon. Either way though, Legends Arceus is an excellent game that is a must-get for fans new and old, and was a great way for me to start off the new slate of 2022 games. If you made it to the end and enjoyed the video, please consider giving the video a like. Pokemon may be scary, but the YouTube algorithm is far more scary for creators like me, and every like helps on that front. In addition, I'd love to hear from you in the comments what your thoughts on Legends Arceus were, or anything else pertaining to the video. Subscribe to keep up with the channel, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Have a great day, and happy gaming.